Hello again, I am Blunty. Monster Hunter, a franchise that has seen limited success and recognition outside of its Japanese home and has spent more time over the last decade on portable consoles than on big screens and has held a lot of players like me, for instance, at bay and reticent to try it out because of its reputation for being a bit confusingly complicated and intimidating for newbies to jump in. With so many more inviting games around, I just never bothered with it. But with Monster Hunter World, the latest in the series, a few things about that have changed. Launching earlier this year on PS4 and Xbox One, and just now having launched on PC, Monster Hunter as a franchise is seeing its first large-scale burst in popularity in the West. Now, this isn't going to be a traditionally structured review. I'm not going to break down how the game operates and plays and such. I'll be assuming by now, if you've been interested or even curious about it, you'll know the basics by now. After all, it's been out on console since January. But the PC release has given it a new burst in popularity, curiosity, and the player base. Now, my personal perspective is of someone who has never been interested in the series, for a few reasons. One is its reputation for being difficult for new players to jump in on at this stage in the franchise. The other is that I thought I wasn't interested in the type of gameplay that was on offer. It basically boils down to every fight is a boss fight, and it can take like 20 or 30 minutes on average. And I thought just following around a great big hulking growling boss monster for half an hour and wailing on it over and over and over and over and over again for half an hour hour just sounded kind of boring. And then one of my besties got it on PS4 at the start of the year. I watched her play it on stream for a fistful of hours and saw how slow the opening and setup and tutorials were and how confusingly, overly and seemingly needlessly complicated the systems are for basically everything you need to do, even right down to the simple weapon selection and upgrading. In fact, she gave up on it, unable to really penetrate it, to get to grips with it in any meaningful way. She got frustrated with it and I got the same feeling just watching her try to play it. I was now more convinced than ever that I wouldn't enjoy what Monster Hunter World had on offer. And by the way, she has way more patience than I do. She's a Soulspawn player, so it's not like she's afraid of challenging games. But then came along Dauntless, a currently early access game that seems similar to Monster Hunter, at least at a glance. Teams of up to four players fight a boss monster for up to half an hour until it falls over. Collect the materials, upgrade your armor, upgrade your weapons, rinse, repeat, over and over and over. But Dauntless is a much more streamlined and accessible by design game than Monster Hunter is. And because Dauntless is free to play, I had nothing to lose but my time in trying it out. And it turns out I really like Dauntless. It's simple, easy, accessible, because it's free to play. You can't afford to scare off new players with confusing overcomplicated systems, so it has to be easy to get into and fun straight away. But it's here in Dauntless I quickly learned how wrong I was about how much I'd enjoy grinding boss fights, learning the fights, the tells for impending attacks, learning the right techniques and strategy for every given monster. It was fun. I didn't expect it to be. But I was having fun. Getting better and better at monsters that once kicked my skull inside out was rewarding. Fighting the one single creature for from between 7 and 20 minutes at a time wasn't boring. It was interesting. It was rewarding. So, brushing against understanding why people like this type of gameplay loop at last, I changed my mind. I decided to give Monster Hunter World a go with its fresh new PC launch, giving me the perfect opportunity. And for six hours. I hated it. For six hours, I was confused. For six hours, I was angry, frustrated, annoyed, put off, resistant, and otherwise grouchy at the game almost constantly. Even though Monster Hunter World was supposed to be a crispy redesign and smoothing out of the rough edges, a game designed to be more inviting to new players than its predecessors ever have been, even though I kept hearing people call it the most accessible Monster Hunter has ever been, it's still very difficult to get to grips with when you're fresh meat. Easier does not mean easy. More accessible does not mean actually accessible. It just means it's a little bit less of a cockhammer than the other games have been. But humming in the back of my mind was the fact that even before the PC launch, Capcom has sold 8 million copies of this game worldwide. 8 million. There must be fun buried in here somewhere. It must click at some stage. There must be some tipping point where I suddenly get it and become a Monster Hunter fan. But there was no such tipping point. But at 8 hours in, I was starting to sense it on the wind. There was a faint whiff of, I 
think I see where the fun might be hiding. At twelve hours in, I had gotten to grips with the often clumsy, overcomplicated, and way more convoluted than they really, really need to be game systems. And now, at twenty-seven hours in, as I say these very words to you, I think I actually like this game. That's a long, long path to take to like a game. 27 hours. There are games that aren't 27 hours long that I love. Some of the best games I've ever played in my life can be completed twice in 27 hours. I hate many things about Monster Hunter World's user interface and the way it buries crap you really need very often. I hate the way it will spell out simple stuff like how to open a menu and select a thing, but utterly refuses to explain, even in vague terms, systems, items, progression, and many, many, many other things that are really quite vital to enjoying this game. This is not a game you can just play or even understand properly without looking outside of the game. I've watched YouTube tutorials and guides, I've read wiki entries, I've talked to people in my Twitch chat, asked them questions trying to understand this game, and I'm still utterly baffled and confused by some of the things that this game does and the things that this game just never ever ever tells you about that you really do need to know. Guess what? This makes it a very badly designed game. But it's also a very enjoyable game because of the one thing at its core. The hunts, the loot grinding, and the material collecting. The pure shining core of its RPG heart. It's a very pretty game with gloriously detailed and well-designed maps and stages and arenas and towns. It's lovely to look at. The monster fights are satisfying. The monster AI is wonderful. They clamber around believably in the world, interacting with their environment in a real feeling way. And even other creatures in the world alongside them. You'll often be in the middle of a hunt and sometimes another monster or swarm of monsters, sometimes even a way stronger boss monster will jump in and attack it, or you, or both of you. It's superb to see this kind of emergent gameplay. It's a huge pain in the ass, don't get me wrong. It can really mess up your hunt and your plans and make you die when you didn't think you were going to die. But it adds a layer to the world that helps make it feel like a real place that things live in. And that's kind of important. And it's this combination of loot grinding, equipment, crafting, RPG stuff, and enjoyably varied monster designs and behaviours and, and a difficulty curve for those fights that feels just about right that all add up to make this a good game in spite of itself. It tries to get in its own way with its horrible design choices and convoluted systems that feel like they've evolved over, well, the entire life of the franchise and have never been properly pruned down to make them work properly or in a sensible or obvious or intuitive way, but there is a good game buried in here. There are no less than 15 different weapon options for any playstyle you like, and although I've tried only two options in earnest so far, I'm told each and every weapon is viable. There's no such thing as the best weapon that you'll find every goddamn mid to high level player using. There are weapons that some will call beginner weapons, but that just means they're beginner friendly, easy to use, easy to get scripts with, but that doesn't make them not viable for late game stuff. I still see high level players using these beginner weapons. And within each weapon class, there's a deeply festooned upgrade path, materials, buffs, debuffs, status effects, and all that kind of stuff. And you'll be needing multiple options for weapons too. You can't just craft your one favorite weapon, stick with it all of the time. Because you're going to need different weapons for different monsters, different affinities, different status effects, different elemental stuff. You might even need a different weapon depending on whether you're trying to kill or capture one of these monsters. Monster Underworld is a game you really have to want to find the fun in. You have to go looking for it. You have to be determined. You have to hunt for the fun. If you'll pardon the parlance. Because the first half dozen hours will do everything it can do to get in your way and in its own way. It will load up an entire magazine of foot bullets and mercilessly and repeatedly fire them into your feet and its feet. If you can push past it, it just might be worth it. And as a game that can promise some players hundreds of hours of endgame fun times past the core story mode, growling your way through the first six to eight hours seems like a small percentage overall. But just so you know, if you can stick with it, if you can push through it, you might find the fun like I eventually did. And I do think it was worth it.
There are very few games or any media, TV series for example, that I would say, yeah, just get through the first eight hours and then it gets worth it. Seems like an idiotic thing to ask someone to do, but it can be worth it. This game might be the Babylon 5 of games. That first season of Babylon 5, just so painful to get through. But once you get through it, everything else is wonderful. Well, not everything, but most things. 80% wonderful. If you like the single player experience, it is practical for most players to do this single player, but it has been designed, of course, to be pretty fun when you're hunting in teams, either with matchmaking or open hunts where just people can join in if you send up an SOS flare, or in parties of dedicated friends. But once more, be aware the online systems are needlessly confusing and overcomplicated, so there'll be some frustration there too for a while. Also, as I type here, in week one of the game, the servers are complete garbage. I'm being dropped out of hunts with infuriating regularity. But this should, quote unquote should, settle down before too much longer, I hope. And of course, as is always the way with Capcom, they're just not very good at PC ports. The game looks great. And I've seen or heard of and experienced no bugs or crashes and the like. The game's been running fine, but the game's graphics engine is not as refined or optimized as I feel like it could be, or should be for that matter. But I've run this on a GTX 1080, I've run it on a GTX 1060, and I've run it on my Intel Hades Canyon Nook, whose hybrid GPU is about the midway point between a 1050 Ti and a 1060, and all work well. I can get to 60 frames per second without any graphical sacrifices that affect the gameplay in any way that I care about. And given the fact that its frame rate on consoles is less than glorious, it's still the best place to play it on PC. But do beware, if you're used to being able to max out game graphic settings, be prepared to feel the PC mastery sting and shame of having to turn something down. I hate doing that. That's why I've got a Threadripper system with a 1080 in it. I don't like turning things down. Damn you, Capcom. And just before we sign off, a last reminder, although Dauntless is a lot more dumbed down, and isn't even as close to being as richly detailed or deep as Monster Hunter World, its basic gameplay is very fun, and it is free to play, and it doesn't have pay to win. It is absolutely worth a go. If you want a much, much, much more streamlined monster hunting experience. They also just added a new content patch too, with more weapons and stuff also landing soon. Anyway, that's my experience with Monster Hunter World on PC. It's... It's, it's an effort, but it's an effort that's worth it, I think. So hopefully this has been helpful to some of you out there. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.